Uh, Tom Yamas uh, had an extensive back and forth with the Memphis police chief. And I want to play a longer excerpt of it here. He began by asking her about the timing of the release of the video for this evening. We know uh, the response sometimes from videos that have a tendency to incite emotion and even anger. And what we wanted to do was think in terms of, you know, the, the impact it would have on the community, the impact it would have on business, the impact it would have on rush hour, our, our school system. So uh, we thought Friday afternoon, Friday evening would be a good time to release it to try to get people home, try to have our children safe, and uh, have a means of being able to manage any type of response. If I can ask you to go back to the first time you saw that video, if you can describe in one word, what was it like? Um, horrific, alarming, uh, disappointing, sad. How would you describe the energy of the officers that pulled over Tyree Nichols? Uh, on a scale of one to 10, they were at a 10. Is that not police protocol? No, it's not police protocol. Um, I've been in this business for 36 years and a lot of the aggression and you know the approach was over the top. And, and, and I think that's sort of what you know, we're trying to figure out they're still ambiguous to us. From the get-go then. Right. This what was caused bad. that? Yes. From the from the get-go. And then it just escalates from there? It escalates from there. From the get-go, the protocol wasn't followed. Right. Talk to me about what happens next, because the family has described their son yeah. being kicked like a football. Mm -hmm. We have heard comparisons to Rodney King. Mm -hmm. And when you hear attorneys for the family, mm -hmm. they, they talk about just a brutal beat down. Absolutely. It, is that all true? Uh, yes, it is. Um, it is true. And um, as, as I said before, it's hurtful. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with the family. And uh, this was right before they uh, viewed the video. And I wanted to let them know ahead of time that, that this video it's going to be hurtful. It's going to be painful for you to see this. And it may not answer your questions. It just may cause you to ask more why. Did you, did you have to apologize to Tyree Nichols' family? I mean, you know, how, do you, how do you have that conversation? You, you naturally say, I am so sorry. You know, and that wasn't just from a police chief. That was from someone who felt her pain, who felt her loss. And, um, you know... Words can be empty sometimes. That's why it was important for me not just to deliver condolences or apologies or I'm sorry. You know, what I wanted to deliver for this family at least was that first step of justice for them to, to quickly deal with these officers within the scope of my power and to help facilitate this movement to the DA's office as well. It was obvious to me that what I saw was beyond the scope of what is condoned in this police department and any p department that I've ever worked in before. And um, something that was not a proud moment. The family's described him as being put up and then sl he slumps down again. He's put up, he's, they yell some, some curse words at him, he slumps again. Did you witness all this? I mean, was, was Tyree Nichols beaten to a pulp where he was completely unconscious and then the abuse sort of almost continued afterwards? Well, um, you know, and now I'm going with recollection. There were times when he was laying. There were times when he was sit, sat up. There were times when he was mumbling and saying words. And, but it was obvious that he was not in control of his physical self. As and he, there was no sense of urgency to get this man help? It, it, in, in my mind, there was not. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.